The real estate crash of 2008 was one of the worst in American history. Foreclosures increased by 81% in a year, with a whopping 3.2 million foreclosed houses. House sales across the country saw a 40% drop. Many things went wrong during 2008, but it's been 16 years since that crash, and surely the market is better now, right? Well, watch till the end, because in this video, I tell you that things are about to get way worse than 2008. If you have watched The Big Short, you know that a major flaw in the real estate lending system in 2008 was the ninja loans. Ninja loans mean people with no income, no job, and no assets getting mortgages for way higher amounts than they should be approved for, regardless of any ability to pay back the money. So it doesn't surprise me when 3.2 million households weren't able to pay their mortgages. The good news is that due to tighter lending practices, those ninja loans are no longer a thing. But the risk of overborrowing is worse today than it was in 2008. See, the average mortgage interest rates leading up to 2008 were over 5%. And they didn't really change much in the crash. It only went up to around 6%. But this time around, we had 30-year mortgages under 4% for two full years, and then the sudden increase to over 7% in 2023. So the people who took adjustable rate mortgages saw their payments increase by more than 50% in a couple of years, which is why we are seeing a steady increase in foreclosure rates across the country. But you might be wondering that most people go for a fixed mortgage, so what's the big deal? Well, at any given time, about 7-10% to of all mortgage takers choose to go with adjustable rate mortgages. These people are the most exposed to the risk of changing economic conditions, and a great example of this is 2008. In 2006, the foreclosure rate was around 0%. 0.5%, but in the years to come, it climbed up to 1 then 2, and at the peak was 2.23%. So the scary thing is that during the worst market crash in real history, the foreclosure rate was only around 2%. So imagine how easy is it for 2% of all households to default. While 10% have adjustable rate mortgages, and it's not like the fixed rate mortgage takers can't default too. And this is just the beginning of it. Let's look at another factor that is looking not so good for the real estate market in the coming years. The prices of the very homes. Everyone says that houses have become more and more expensive over time, and they aren't wrong, but a big portion of that increased price is just because of inflation. So to find out the true increase in real estate prices, we can look at the Case-Shiller Index. These two economists made this index to reflect the true increase in prices of single-family houses in America, accounting for inflation. For example, if a property was worth $100,000 in year one and is now being sold for $105,000 in year two, and we know that CPI, the index which we use to measure inflation, showed an annual inflation rate of 2%. We can observe that even though the price of the house has increased by 5%, the Case-Shiller Index will show an increase of only 3% as the remaining was due to inflation. So, the Case-Shiller Index basically removes the effect of inflation on the price of houses. Knowing all this, we can see that there was a significant housing bubble building up from the late 90s to mid-2000s and we all know when it popped. But relatively, a bigger bubble has been building up since 2012. And even though it saw a tiny bit of correction due to the increase rates it's going back up, and when this pops it will be worse due to the sheer size of it. We know it only took a couple of percent of households to default and caused 2008, but this time, not only the size of the problem is huge, but we also have just many more problems across the economy. Things like inflation, which has been a major financial stress recently, was around 3% and peaked at 3.8% during the financial crash, whereas we have already seen a massive increase in inflation being over 4% for two straight years and reaching as high as 8% in 2022. Growth in per capita income was strong for nearly two decades before 2008, whereas COVID left us with a 2.4% drop in 2020 alone. The timing of lockdowns put millions of businesses under immense pressure, which led to them taking debt to survive, and a lot of them still have not recovered fully years after the event. So, we might have seen decent GDP numbers and the stock market going up, but the backbone of the economy is a lot weaker than it was 16 years ago, and that's what will make things worse in the next real estate crash. What are your thoughts on the current status of the economy? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.